for a midday prayers. Uh, my name is Pastor Shelley Wiley from People's United Methodist Church in South Thomaston, Maine, Camden's John Street United Methodist Church, and the Finnish Church, uh, Congregationalist Church on Route 131, also in South Thomaston. I welcome you in on this day and to take a moment to pray and give thanks to God and to lift up our prayers of concern for those who are um, having struggles today uh, due to various things, including uh, the uh, coronavirus that is here um, kind of wreaking havoc across our country and the world. And with that, let us begin with our opening song. and pray together and be a part of each other's lives, um, even though we may be physically distant. Uh, I'm going to continue sharing with you the opening prayers that have been written by the New England Conference of the United Methodist Church. Um, they are writing daily prayers for this season of ours. So let us be in a spirit of prayer. Gracious and faithful God, you who are unchangeable, unworthing, unwavering, and everlasting. In these uncertain and challenging times, we seek your face. We seek your direction. We seek your protection. And we desire your perfect will in our lives. We acknowledge your omniscient spirit and are thankful for that for you that that excuse me and are thankful that you are not caught off guard by this virus we are living in a world that is full of dry bones that desperately need a fresh outpouring of your holy spirit grant us wisdom as we care for these temples our bodies that house your holy spirit Help your creation to refrain from finger pointing and blaming others. Remind us that the rain falls on the just and the unjust alike. Teach us to discern the purpose of this season and time in the life of your church and this world. Give us the desire to seek you more. Come Holy Spirit, revive your dry bones. Come, Holy Spirit, and breathe hope into these seemingly hopeless situations. Make us more aware of those with food and housing insecurities, and of the homeless, and those in prison, either physically or mentally. Let us be aware of our first responders and all healthcare professionals. 
Let us pray for our local and state and federal government leaders. Let us also pray for our nonprofit and church leaders as well. And for the small business owners who are trying just to stay in existence. Grant us creative ways to be your hands and feet in the communities in which we live and the communities in which we are called to serve. Instill in us the ability and the willingness to be better to your creation and to your planet. Forgive us where we have failed you and have fallen short. Give us the grace and the humility to acknowledge those failings and to turn and seek your wisdom to become reconciled. Lord, it is in your mercy we come before you this day. Hear this prayer and make us one again. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Um, so, just a few things. I th think starting next Thursday, um, since we're coming up into Holy Week and trying to find ways to, for us to still uh, have our Holy Week experiences, starting next Thursday, I'm going to invite you to join me with um, some kind of comfort food and some kind of a comfort drink. And we'll celebrate a love feast together uh, and which is kind of um, a sharing of, of communion with one another without it actually being a communion service and a partaking of the same loaf and the same cup. Uh, so next Thursday, join me here at 1230 and bring something to eat with you and something to drink and I'll lead us through a, a brief service of love feast, which is um, a very very uh, traditional, ancient ritual of the early Christian church. So um, do that with me. Uh, I'd also like to share um, an interesting an interesting conversation I had yesterday with someone. I've been doing check-in phone calls, and, and uh, it's been great to hear many of your voices on the phone. Um, and uh, this person, in the course of their conversation, was wondering about reading the scriptures. And, and they mentioned the idea of, you know, I've never read the whole Bible from beginning to end. And, and I wonder if, if doing that now would, would be helpful in some way. And so we talked and I asked some questions about, you know, what was drawing them to feel this need of starting the scriptures and reading from the beginning to the end. And their, their hope was that somehow it would, would help them be a little more focused and a little more centered and somehow be a better Christian simply because they've read the whole scripture. Um, I, I hear that concern and I hear that person's willingness to want to be um, a better Christian. Um, I'm not sure if starting with the first chapter in Genesis and reading straight through to the end of Revelation will necessarily make one a bit of Christian. I do believe that reading the scriptures daily open our minds and our hearts to the workings and the, the wisdom of God who is always speaking to us in our daily lives. And so if we understand and have um, a, a working knowledge of the stories and the faith experiences and the, the hymns and prayers of our ancestors in the faith, it certainly does help us. But, but I don't think reading from one end of the Bible to the other is necessarily the best way to go about doing that. And so, so my thoughts on that, for those of you who may be wondering, oh gosh, you know, if, if I just read the Bible from beginning to end, I will somehow help um, lift up the, the world. Uh, and, and maybe help fight this coronavirus. Um, my, my suggestion would be to kind of ask yourself, what, what need do you have in you right now for the word of God? 
what is what is drawing you there? Are you looking for um, maybe songs to sing and phrases to to uh, repeat, or a sense of hope, or uh, a, a place where you can hear the struggles of the people of faith that resonate to you, and then it's something that you can draw yourself to. Uh, well, for, for me, that's what the Book of Psalms does, and also the uh, all the the wisdom literature. So uh, I I would suggest that if that's the need you're looking for, this place of of prayers and um, of songs that can be uh, in small small sections memorized, uh, read the Psalms. Read read the Psalms and don't say I'm going to read for an hour and read ten Psalms in a day. You know, take take one Psalm. One psalm a day. There's 150 of them. You know, take one psalm and reflect on that all day long. Some of the psalms are quite long because of the type of psalm they are. Um, so maybe divide it up over a couple of days. Um, I'll be reading Psalm 16 for us in a, in a moment. Um, but if you're looking to hear the stories of of the people of faith, the ancient Hebrews who who become Israel and Jerusalem and the Jews, modern day Jews, uh, you know, the new, the old Testament stories in the first five books, particularly the first three books um, are, are very helpful to hear about the struggles of faith and, and the, the wanting to be faithful to God's calling and then to read how, um, as humans, we, we kind of keep messing it up and God comes in and breaks into our lives and offers us forgiveness and a second chance and rebuilds and reconnects a covenant with us and, and helps us move forward out of our places of brokenness and wandering. Um, so if, if you want to hear those kinds of stories and to hear the struggles of our ancient um, ancestors in the faith, uh, that's where I would encourage you to go, would be to read those first five books, the Torah, um, those first five books of scripture, and take in the depth of those stories and hear where God breaks in in the lives of the ancestors and, and finds a way to kind of pull them through. And when they really mess up, how God breaks in and and says, okay, so yeah, you couldn't keep my covenant. Let me let me adapt, uh, kind of adapt, or even create a new covenant for you to follow. Um, and here are the rules a little clearer. Here's what I'm expecting from you, a little bit clearer. Uh, and uh, let's try it again. Uh, the the prophets, particularly the major prophets, um, Isaiah, all 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 sections of Isaiah, Jeremiah, my fave, um, and, and Ezekiel, and um, even some of the minor prophets, Amos, um, Hosea, um, I, I love Nehemiah, and Ezra, the whole rebuilding the temple, and that being called forth, and how um, they kind of get swayed into the wrong direction and, and get pulled back again. Uh, the prophets are, are wonderful opportunity to to read the corrective voice to a culture or a society that has that has turned its back on that calling to God you know the prophecy in the scriptures are is not what we think of prophecy today you know we, we sometimes think of prophecy as being a kind of a projector of the future and you know, being clairvoyant and somehow being able to predict out five, six hundred years in advance, and you know, only only special people have these prophetic powers to predict the future. Um, in the ancient cultures, you know, a prophet was one who read the signs of the times, and they understood God's calling for God's people. And they saw what was going on around them and were willing to speak out publicly about where the society was wrong 
and where the society was misrepresenting the will of God and holding the leaders of that, that society accountable, whether it was the religious leaders or it was the government civic leaders, it didn't matter. The prophets were there to say, here is God's will. We know this is God's will. And here is how you are misrepresenting it. And here are the bad things that are happening because you are not living and, uh, and, and striving and making decisions based on God's will. And, and so when they say in the prophecies you know, that this is going to happen, it's more like a mathematical equation. They're saying, you know, if you do A, or we did A, and in the past we've done B, and therefore C happened, well, look, here we are again, and we're doing A all over again. And I'm telling you, as a prophet, that if we put B into this equation, we're going to end up back at C. So let's not put B in the equation. Let's do something different so we don't end up with C. So that's how prophecy works. Um, I always find it interesting how, how we're willing to, as people of faith, listen to the ancient prophets, hold our government officials accountable and hold our religious leaders accountable, especially when it comes to decisions that, that hurt those who are impoverished or those who have no housing or those who lack opportunity or the continued oppression of, of certain groups of people. We're willing to hear the ancient prophets say that to the ancient leaders, um, but wow, we're not willing as, as, as a collective to hear the prophets of our own day speaking those same kinds of words and those same kinds of, of, of holding leadership accountable. Um, we're not really willing to hear a lot of that today. Uh, and so, and so I, I encourage you to read the prophets if you're looking for that, that sense of what does the scripture have to say about speaking truth to power? And what does scripture have to say to us as people of faith when it comes to seeing oppression and injustice, uh, how we how we are to act. Uh, so the prophets are, are really great for reading that. And of course, we can go into the four gospels. Uh, we need to understand that the four gospels all portray a different aspect and a different focus of Jesus' life. But if you're looking for Jesus' teachings as we have them today in writing and how Jesus interpreted his faith, which is Jewish faith, and how it called people to respond in their day and age, you know, that's where I would say, you know, go and, and read, read the gospels. Again, don't read them, you know, one whole gospel in a day, take a chapter, maybe two, and, and really, really dig in deep and hear what Jesus is saying and really ponder the the actions that Jesus takes uh, to to inform where and how he is going to make his next move and how we who profess and claim his title Christian how how maybe we are being called by Jesus to also move forward and then of course to read Acts and um, the, the letters of Paul, um, all those epistle writings and the, um, the, the, the letters at the end of our holy scriptures, you know, that the, they express the influence of Jesus and the Jesus movement upon the coming generations after Jesus' death and resurrection. Um, so it's, it's kind of interesting to see the similar problems that we still have today, right? 2000 years after Christ's death and resurrection. And we still have church leaders who are arguing about who's better and who has a right to be in the pulpit and who has a right to preach and who is ordained and who's not ordained and who are we supposed to follow? So it's kind of wonderful to go and read Peter's writings and Paul's writings.
and and uh, hear how they address and how they understand the calling of Jesus upon our lives and how they, in their own right, kind of act prophetically um, for their day and age to, to say, hey, you know, we've been here before and Jesus said we, we aren't to elevate ourselves just because we claim his name. We are called to be servants to all people. Uh, so, so again, I, I encourage you to seek out what it is in the scripture you're looking to find and to, to turn your focus in reading of the scriptures in that direction. For whatever reason the spirit is calling you, that is where it is calling you. So for comfort and prayers and, and ancient songs, you know, go to the Psalms. If you're looking for the teachings and how the ancient peoples and the ancestors heard God calling and, and work through that relationship with God, then go to the first three, three books of the Bible. Um, you know, the prophets to hear how we're, how we're called to hold each other accountable, both the civic as well as religious communities um, to live by God's will and God's commandments. You know, the Gospels, if we just want to know more about Jesus, and of course, the uh, all the letters, the epistles, for, um, for how people after Jesus' day in life um, dealt with the growing of the Christian church. Um, I would encourage us to not necessarily read the book of Revelation. Um, you can, if you're feeling so called, but Revelation is a tricky book and it's not one to delve in lightly and it's one that needs lots of close study and people to interact with. Uh, so I would encourage you to, to maybe during this coronavirus time to, to, to maybe hold off on reading Revelation. And uh, we just finished our Bible study on Revelation a year and a half ago. So maybe um, if people are interested, it, we can go and do that book uh, again uh, when we are able to gather together again this summer. So, so that's my, my thoughts for you today with how to turn to Scripture. Uh, so I was reading through, and um, I, I decided that Psalm 16 um, was speaking to me today. And, and so I'm going to, to read that. It's from um, my, my um, New Oxford annotated uh, study Bible. And so we're reading from the New Revised Standard Translation of Scriptures. It reads, Protect me, O God. For in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the holy ones in the land, they are the noble in whom all is all my delight. Those who choose another God multiply their sorrows. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out or take their names upon my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me because the Lord is my right hand. And I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body also rests secure. For you do not give me up to Sheol. Or let your faithful ones see the pit. You show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. 
you will show me the path of life and guide me to joy forever. Let us pray. Oh, holy God, you are our right hand. You are our guiding spirit. We give you thanks this day for your presence in our lives and for the opportunity to gather during this time, even though it may be through digital means and ways, we know that your Holy Spirit connects our spirits to one another. We take a moment to pray for the strength and courage of your church to speak truth to power. We pray this day for your Holy Spirit to be upon those who are making decisions that are truly decisions of life and death. May they be guided by your wisdom. We pray this day that your healing power and your healing presence be with first responders and, and medical professionals and those who are caring for the sick and those needing medical procedures. And yes, even those who are afflicted with this coronavirus, that your healing may be not just of their physical body, but of their minds and their souls as well. That true wholeness and true health shall return to all. We pray this day for those who are downtrodden or are anxious or concerned that your peace that comes through Christ Jesus may rest upon their hearts, may lift them from this despair and bring to them a place of light and of hope. We pray this day for those who are walking through the valley of the shadow of death. We in our faith know that you are reaching forth through that valley to pull them closer to you, to relieve them of their stresses, to relieve them of their ailing bodies and to bring them into light and into the community of saints that dwell with you. May their journey and path be a release in a place of full healing. Hold gently those who grieve the loss of their loved ones. May they feel our presence lifting them May they come to know that Christ is with them and weeping as well and is there to wipe their tears and to help them move forward in the hours and weeks to come. And we pray this day for our own lives, for the times that we have brought forth joy and the simple pleasures of this day. And we ask that you forgive us, O oh God, when we have messed up a bit. The anger that has come or the frustration or the forgetfulness or whatever it may have been that has caused hurt this day. Forgive us and help our eyes to see your will at work in our lives that move us forward. May we continue to strive to be your faithful people and to be the hands and feet and compassion and love of Christ in this world. We pray this in all things in the name of Jesus, who is our Lord and unites us with his prayer.
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Praise you, God. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you all for being with me this time of day. And um, remember next week, next Thursday, to have something to eat with you and a little, and a little something to, to sip on, coffee or tea or juice or even water. And um, we'll partake of a love feast together. This coming Sunday at 9 o'clock, we will be having our drive-in worship experience at People's United Methodist Church on 13 Chapel Street in South Thomaston. Come with your breakfast coffee and your snack and stay in your car and we will sing and praise God together um, in a time of worship. Uh, we invite you to bring a bell. So any kind of a bell that you might have or find, you'll bring the bell. We'll be ringing the bell after each hymn and we'll ring the bell after the prayers, um, maybe even after the reading of scripture. Um, so bring that bell with you and we shall worship together. Um, God bless you on this day. Um, may you find time to call a friend or family member here in the mid coast of Maine. It is sunny and bright. Um, so if you get a chance, go out, listen to the birds sing and um, enjoy the breaking forth of spring that we're seeing in the trees as well as in our gardens. God bless. Have a blessed day.